Now we move to the grammatical relations. So uh, grammatical relations are defined structurally, that is, they are defined in terms of the tree. We need to define what is a subject and objects and objects of preposition. Okay, so as you can see here, so the NP is the subject, which is daughter of TP. So the definition, the syntactic definition of the subject, so the subject is the daughter of TP, okay, and sister to the VP. So you may say the subject is dominated by TP, is immediately dominated by TP, and symmetrically segments the VP, okay? Direct object, this is the direct object. What does it segment? What does the direct object segment symmetrically and asymmetrically? And, okay, and what does it govern? What does it govern? Uh, it uh, segments uh, symmetrically V and PP and asymmetrically all the uh, other nodes below uh, PP. Mm -hmm. And what does it govern? It governs uh, um, it governs P. Uh -huh, very good. Uh, yeah. does, it, does it does it govern N? Does the no. NP govern N? Why? No, there is no, no there, is there, is, there, is, there is there is there is a phrase. There is PP that blocks that okay. blocks it. It can it can go. Okay, just uh, yeah. Look at the definition again. You need to pay attention to definitions, okay? Government node A governs node B if A segments B and there is no node G such that G is segmented by A and G asymmetrically segments B. Asymmetrically segments B. Asymmetric segments B. I'm repeating this why because it's it's the the the, the main point that you forgot uh, professor now, so now we need an example where okay I'm, I'm going to come up with an example where there is no government because there is no uh, asymmetric segment so well, suppose that we have here a here we have one this is the example two right so uh, does so example one does B govern e does B govern e professor the B does not govern e because there is another node intervening which is C this one there is another node intervening if you go back to the <coughs> definition if you go back to the definition the definition says node A governs B if A segments B and there is no node G such that G <coughs> is commanded by A and G Asymmetric multi commands B. You have to pay attention here. This intervening node is only segmented by A. Only segmented by A. Not we don't care whether symmetrically or asymmetrically. It is segmented by A and asymmetrically segments B, which means this intervening node, no problem. What is important is that it should be segmented by A, but it must asymmetrically segment B, which means if it symmetrically segments B, we don't care, okay? But it must be asymmetrically segmenting the other. So look at this example. So here, this is the node intervening. Why? Because according to the definition, give me one second, please. Example three. 
So here, does does uh, B pay govern F? Yes, because this is a phrase, and, and there is, is no no intervening note. No intervening phrase. Yes. Okay. D. Here we have F. D. Now I want you to understand the difference between number one and number four. <clears throat> okay, the difference between number one and number four. So number one, uh, number four, does B govern C? Governs C. There is nothing intervening between B and C. Okay, does B govern E? No, sir. Explain. Because C is intervening. Yes, C is intervening. Would you please explain why by reference to the definition? So here, definition says there is a node intervening. And this node, which is C in this case, and this node is symmetrically C command okay, by B. A. Does does C symmetrically the command A? No, Professor. It does not. There are cousins. E and C are cousins. So why are you saying that B does not govern A because C intervenes? So I repeat. I repeat. You have to pay attention to the definition. Def the definition says a node can intervene and can block government in two cases. First, it must be seconded by, by node A. And it must, pay attention, asymmetrically seconded the other node. Now here, Look at, um, for example, look at B. B governs C because there is no other node that is segmented by B and asymmetrically, I specify, I specify asymmetrically segment C. Okay? B governs C because B asymmetrically sequence there is no other node between them now here b does it govern e yes why because according to our definition according to our definition cp is a phrase so forget about it it cannot block b uh, the governor and also with c some of you wrongly said that C intervenes. No. Go back to the definition. Definition says that the intervener must be seconded by A. So here, yes, it is seconded by node A. But don't forget that the second part of the definition says it must asymmetrically seconded the other node. So there's a C asymmetrically command E? No. So C is not an intervener. Okay? Now hey, here... Professor. Yes. First one. Uh, B governs C, yes, but uh, does yeah. it D um, intervene? It is segmented by B and asymmetrically segments is it? Yeah. That, that that's a good point. That's a good point. If we if we don't uh, pay attention to this to the linear order, so we may say that D uh, intervenes, which is a similar case to this one, except that here we have. So according to the definition, yes, B does not segment C. According to the definition we we, we have covered so far, because. There is another node, there is another node which is D, which is segmented by B and 
asymmetrically segments C. So according to the definition, yes, B does not govern C because there is another node D which is segmented by B and asymmetrically segments C. Go back to example one. So does B govern E? There any node, other node, which is segmented by B and asymmetrically segment E? Is there any other node? Yes. This yes. is the definition that, that you have to remember. You have to remember the definition of government. The definition of the government says that node A governs node B if there is no intervening node G, which is commanded by A, and also asymmetrically. The definition does not say uh, and segmentally. It says and asymmetrically. So, do we have any other node that is segmented by B and asymmetrically segments E? Which one? C. C. Yeah, C. Yeah. C is segmented by B and asymmetrically segments E. Okay. So, uh, in this case, so it's not B does not govern E. So we may add one more case here, which is, um, so does A, B govern E? We're just repeating now. Does B yes. govern E? Yes, yes so. explain, explain. Yes? Uh, because uh, B uh, segment uh, E, and there's uh, no other node that uh, segments E asymmetrically. Yes. What about CP? Uh, CP cannot because uh, uh, it's not like it's a, yeah, it's a clause. It's not a, a lexical category. Yes. Okay, it talks about in number four. So please compare these two nodes, these two trees. Now here again, does B uh, govern E? Okay, I'm talking about the last uh, tree. This one. B. Yes. Yeah, does. Yes, it does. Yes, yes, perfect. So B governs E because there is no node. Of course, there is a C between B and E. The problem is that C is segmented by B, but does not segment asymmetrically E. Because they are okay? cousins. They are cousins. Now, uh, so B does not govern. E. Now the question, does B govern C? It does. B governs E. Yeah. yeah, sorry, I said C is not an intervener. So B governs E. Yeah. Okay? Now the question is, yeah, does B govern C? No, sir. It no, sir, it doesn't. No. It doesn't. Because uh, it's uh, asymmetrically uh, commanded by D. By D, yes. So because B, because there is another intervening node, which is D, which is also segmented by D and asymmetrically segments C. So this is similar to number four. Similar to number four, B does not govern C if we consider that D is symmetrically segmented by B and asymmetrically Segments uh, uh, C. Sir. Mm -hmm, yes. Uh, shouldn't we respect the linear level? So according to the definition we have, so we apply it as it is. Okay. So whenever there is an, an intervening node that okay uh, intervenes between. Uh, Whenever there is a node that is segmented by A and asymmetrically segments B, so it's an intervener. Uh, here, D is symmetrically segmented by B and uh, A symmetrically segments C. So D intervenes. Uh, the subject we said is daughter of TP and sister to VP. Uh, direct object is daughter of VP, sister to the verb, the object of a preposition is sister to preposition and daughter of 
PP. Okay. So the indirect objects in English, it can be a preposition phrase. It depends on the nature of the verb. Okay. So uh, let's give pin ads to Paula. So this is the direct object and the indirect object here. So the indirect object is a preposition phrase. Preposition phrases can function as adjuncts, can uh, function as a uh, complement, can function as uh, public complements, maybe, in certain contexts. So, or it can be the first NP after the verb, which takes two NPs. So, look at the position of the preposition phrase as indirect objects. Okay? Uh, gave peanuts to Paula and gave Paula peanuts instead of to Paula. Okay? So, um, direct and the indirect objects. Okay, so the indirects can follow the direct object and sometimes can precede the uh, direct, direct object, object, depending on whether you use to or not. Now, this is because of the nature of the verb. The verb requires three arguments, as we said uh, in the first session. So the verb requires the subject, the first argument, and requires two objects, uh, two more arguments. Now oblique, now we're talking about indirect objects here, um, just to explain the difference between the preposition phrase, which is an indirect object, the preposition phrase, which is an oblique. Okay, so in English, obliques are almost always marked with a preposition. For example, John tagged Lewis with a regulation baseball on Tuesday. So the first preposition phrase is an oblique, and the second one is also an oblique. Now you may say, note that the PP can be as oblique or indirect object, depending on whether. Of course, indirect object has an argument. Oblique has no argument, which it is required. Indirect object, when the preposition is required by the verb, it's, it functions as an indirect object. When it's optional, when it functions as an adjunct or adjunct, it is an oblique. So the difference between the two is in whether the preposition phrase is part of the argument structure of the verb or not. When we say part of the argument structure, it means if the verb takes three arguments, it, the preposition must be one of them. Okay, if it's not one of them, it means it's not important in the argument structure. If the verb is of the type, like give. Now, please pay attention to this. So here we have the verb, we have the NP, we have this uh, dash here, we have the NP and the PP. So this dash means this is the position of the verb, because we're talking about verbs here, which means that the verb must be preceded by the NP, the first argument, which is the subject, and followed by the NP, which is the object, and the preposition phrase, which is the indirect object. For example, the verb give. Okay, I, the first NP, gave the verb, her, the NP, okay, or I uh, uh, gave it to him. So to him is preposition phrase, but it's part of the, the argument structure, because we are talking about a verb that requires two complements. So in this case, if the, the preposition phrase is part of the argument structure, in this case, this preposition phrase is an indirect object. However, if the verb is of the type in P, in P, so here we have the verb, this is the position of the verb, so it is preceded by an in P and followed by an in P. Here we are talking about just monotransitive verbs, such as read, such as meet, I met him. So the verb meet requires only two arguments. The in P, the subject, and the in P, the object. So in this case, if the verb requires only two arguments, then the preposition phrase is not an indirect object. It's impossible. 
in that case it's an oblique so like e then the pp is an oblique okay so if the preposition phrase has an argument which could be the indirect object then it is an indirect object if the preposition phrase has no argument then it is an oblique uh, remember the examples we talked about uh, before I gave you the example of I put the book on the table and I met him at school the difference between on the table and at school is that at school is optional we can say simply I met him so at school is optional because of the nature of the verb the verb meet requires only two arguments the subjects and the, the object the subject is I and the object is him I met him so at school is optional so in this case at school is an adjunct it's okay an oblique so adjuncts are obliques okay so the, in the, the first example I put the book on the table we cannot say simply I put the book I put the book why because of the nature of the verb the verb put requires three arguments the subject okay which must be an MP and two complements the NP and the preposition phrase on the table which means that this preposition phrase is not an adjunct is not an oblique but it's a complement because it is obligatory in the argument structure okay now compare uh, in these two trees uh, let's give peanuts to Paula okay so uh, because the verb requires three arguments the NP is the first argument this is the second argument direct objects indirect objects is the third argument so this preposition phrase is not an oblique is an indirect object because it's important to the verb the verb must have three arguments okay and uh, look at this verb the verb it does not require three arguments it requires only somebody who eats the agent and something which is eaten I ate an apple that's enough so let's eat peanuts with jam this is optional so this is oblique is it clear yes sir, yes, sir.